Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well, and I do hope you all had a fantastic weekend, my friends. Now, today we're going to be talking about Boris Johnson and his Brexit legacy. Yeah, I know. But anyway, Friday morning, I was looking on social media like Twitter, and it was bombarded with clips of question time the night before, and full of lunatic reasons as to why people voted to put economic sanctions on themselves. Oh, I didn't watch it because for me personally, I would rather soak my balls in vinegar and scrape them across broken glass because it's less painful. But from what I saw, both BBC, Question Time, John Redwood, Ben Habib, and from what I even heard, the Labour MP didn't come out with any glowing terms. Now, apparently, someone voted to leave because he's actually seen people on boats get off them and head straight towards the benefits building. <laughs> yeah, really to a woman complaining about German roofs or something. Uh, anyway, I have no idea. But anyway, on the day, I was reading an interesting article in the Institute for Government, written by a young lady called Jill, Jill Ritter, discussing the long-lasting consequences of Boris Johnson's role in Brexit. Now, while Johnson may have left Parliament, his Brexit legacy continues to shape the United Kingdom's path forward, and I'll leave a link in the description box for you to read it. It's a very interesting read, I'll give it that. But anyway, Rutter begins with highlighting the pivotal role Boris Johnson played in supporting the Leave campaign during the Brexit referendum. This decision ultimately led to David Cameron's resignation as Prime Minister and Johnson's promise to deliver Brexit resonated with the Conservative Party, who saw him as their last bastion hope to counter the rising threat from the Brexit Party and Nigel Fogg on of ignorance and the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn. And we all remember that bendy banana gag he pulled when he shoved a mic next to his mendacious, dissimulating mouth and that nonsense written on the side of that bus. Yeah, we all remember the bus, don't you? Anyway, the thing is, for me, anyone who knew what type of duplicitous type of person he was always remember the quotes he made long before even leaving the European Union was even an afterthought, I suppose. He was a Remainer, and if only a pragmatic one at that, at best. However, despite the UK's officially leaving the European Union in January 2020, Rutter points out that Brexit implementations has not been smooth sailing. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> the complexities and capacity constraints have delayed the full implementation of controls at the UK border, which is now scheduled for October 2024. Now, this delay raises concerns about potential disruptions in supply chains and price hikes for EU exporters. Furthermore, immigration issues such as the granting of settled status in EEA residents have forced challenges to and criticism. Now, Rutter also addresses the elusive Brexit benefits that were promised. <laughs> While Brexit campaigner Andrew Ledsom highlighted certain areas where Brexit benefits were supposedly realised, such as trade, influence and envir environmental regulations. Rutter argues that the reality is more complex. <sighs> You're telling me. Trade deals have been mostly rolled over from existing EU agreements with limited enhancements and setbacks in trading with key partners like the EU and the US. Now, we also are lettuce Liz, gallivanted around the world, won't you, for photo opportunities and f even forced our Australian trade negotiator to sit in an uncomfortable chair to only just give them everything that they ever wanted. <laughs> the UK influence has been questioned due to actions that have damaged its reputation for stable institutions and respect for the rule of law. Additionally, the economic impact of Brexit has strained budgets for initiatives like levelling up and public services. And she's right as well, isn't she? We remember the breaking international law in a limited and specific way line, didn't we? If you're a serial lawbreaker, why would anyone worth the salt want to take you seriously? 
I want to do business with anyone who won't take their international responsibilities safe seriously. Oh, I always say to those who agree with that line of thought that, that, that you know, just rip it up. I always say to them, if you were in business and somebody who has a history of not keeping their end of the bargain, i.e. paying for your endeavours, with, would you still do business with that person? And none of this nonsense about, oh, well, I'll just drag around the car and knock ten bells out of them till I got paid. None of that. I'm not interested. I'd stay, still just go back to, would you still do business with them? It's like a serious lawyer wouldn't touch Trumple thin-skinned, would they? Not even with a ten-foot foot barge pole. So the answer would have to be no, wouldn't it? So why would any country take our demands seriously either? And one of the driving factors about Brexit was the desire to restore parliamentary sovereignty. However, Rutter notes that the government's approach to Brexit often sidelined a parliament, raising concerns about accountability and professional... Sorry, I can't help myself. Every time I hear that word, I break out into a Rishi Sunak uh, impersonation. Sorry. And also, when I hear that story, it always takes me back to the time when I was Spafford Johnson parole parliament, and I would say people who I know who voted for Brexit because they wanted their sovereignty back we're dancing a merry dance on facebook and whatever social media when our unclothed prime minister spaffer johnson had just taken away their sovereignty and lied to the queen you just really couldn't make it up could you well the relationship with devolved governments as well in scotland and wales she said has also deteriorated as they their concerns were disregarded and devolved autonomy was undermined by the uk Internal Market Act. In Northern Ireland, Brexit has caused prolonged political impasses and a lack of trust with a UK government. And who trusts this government now anyway? But anyway, Rutt also says as she looked at the highlights of the disappointing economic growth, the cost of living crisis and the state of public services, which contribute to a growing settlement that Brexit was the wrong decision. Well, who knew? <laughs> now, some hope that a future opposition government might pursue efforts to rejoin. But who knows? But I also, she also said in the article that even minor improvements to the UK EU relationship may prove challenging. She said the EU is more focused on implementation rather than renegotiation, and both sides will eventually need to consider the strategic importance of their relationship. Now, for me, why would the EU want to renegotiate, especially with a country that breaks international law at a whim, insults them and treats them with very little respect, if any? Would you? I know I wouldn't. (laughs) General Ritter also said it becomes evident that Boris Johnson's Brexit legacy will continue to shape the UK's future. Now, while some promises and benefits of Brexit remain elusive, the consequences and challenges persist. The relationship between the UK and the EU, the role of parliamentary sovereignty and the dynamics with devolved governments are all crucial aspects that will require thoughtful consideration moving forward. (laughs) What do you guys think? Interesting article, I have to say. But anyway... Before I go, I'm just going to say my schedule might be a bit skewy this next week or two because a bit of a family crisis a little bit because uh, I'll be brief. My wife's in hospital due to having heart problems. So I'm juggling family life and looking after the kids and trying to do some of this at the best of times. So if I'm a bit bit skewy all over the place, I do apologise. But anyway, as I said, I'll leave the article in the description box for you, for you below to read. Very interesting. And if you made it this far to the end of this inane rambling, thank you so much. And I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.